Hey there, YouTube. Skeptical Root. Time for part four of four of the uh, video series we've been watching here. It's the single video that I've been responding to. Reasonable questions for anti-SJWs. Uh, originally published by Dr. Christy Winters. Probably the first time I've called her doctor on this channel, but uh, she is uh, actually a PhD doctor in, I believe, I don't remember, sociology. She she studies uh, politics and, and the methods and motivations of, of people in politics. So anyway, we're uh, part four here. I think this is the last part. Uh, there's a few more general questions. So let's get going. What is the number of followers, the number of likes, the number of dislikes, the number of retweets, the number of subscribers? Any of those numbers, any of those metrics, what have they got to do with the argument? Deepak Chopra, for example, a man who trots out an endless stream of pseudoscientific quantum woo bollocks, has nearly three million followers. So what? Those people follow him because he tells them what they want to hear. Why even mention the number of followers you have? What difference does it make? Phil, I've never heard somebody make that assertion before, that I have more followers, so I must be right. <laughs> but I hear this coming from the social justice camps more often. Um, I especially here, the only time I hear about sub counts is when somebody's complaining that somebody with a lot of followers, like Bering, goes after somebody with 100 followers. Okay, if they're making dumb statements, then what's wrong with that? Be that as it may. Um, I, I, I don't see the point. It's the arguments themselves that, that should matter. If somebody came, somebody with a, a million subs came and did a video about me and my comment section was flooded with comments, I probably just wouldn't read them. Um, right or wrong, I might give it a go, but I, I, I it wouldn't even with my 13 subs at this point, I don't think that I would be uh, necessarily <sighs> needing to be dedicated to responding to everything. <clears throat> but wh when has this ever come up? I, I've never seen this argument, never seen this argument except in the reverse, where someone with a, an anti-social justice person with a lot of subscribers does a video about somebody with fewer subscribers. Nobody complained about this when it was atheists talking about, you know, Christians, when Thunderfoot would go after, um, what's his name? I can't think of it. Um, or something like that. There's never an outcry about that. There's no outcry when when uh, Onision goes after, you know, somebody else either. You know, as far as using an argument, I have more subs, so therefore I'm right. I, I literally never heard that. Uh, and I subscribe to some of the, like everybody on that little spinny thing in the beginning here, I, I've watched most of those people for years, if not longer however long they've been, you know, on YouTube. Uh, and my IRL account on YouTube, I've been around since 2008, 2009, watching YouTube videos. Uh, this channel only since 2014, I want to say. But I've been following a lot of these people for, for years, and I've never heard them make the argument that I have more subs, therefore I'm more right. So uh, perhaps you'd like to, to back that up with some evidence, some empirical data to support the question that you're bothering to ask in this video. Why is it that you go on and fucking on about safe spaces and trigger warnings and delicate little flowers 
but continue to hide behind your cartoon avatars and your childish pseudonyms. And whenever anyone calls you out on your sexist, racist, homophobic, bigoted rhetoric, you become the argument of your own scorn and are hashtag triggered, as they say. It's a dishonest question. And and I'm surprised, actually, that, that Philip Moriarty did not make this particular question, uh, as he is wont to disparage people from being anonymous online. People are anonymous online for all kinds of reasons. The most important reason, though, is that because it should be about arguments and not about who someone is. And not everybody hides behind cartoon avatars. I mean, I do this face-to-face -face with the camera. Uh, just about everything about me is out there. I choose to not use my real name online because I have personal reasons for that. And it has nothing to do with whether or not I'm, I'm out as an atheist or anything like that uh, or out as social justice thing. But, but you, Michael, make a good point in your question as to why people aren't open all the time on the internet. Because they get called racist and misogynist and, and sexist and transphobic and all these things which can just the accusation can certainly hurt somebody's life their their livelihood and their their real life thing because somebody disagreed with them they they start touting all this stuff oh this person is racist this person said this this person said that and a lot of times it, it's gross mischaracterizations of what was actually said or what was actually done or happened or, but because they want to disparage this person, they go out of their way to try to get them fired from their jobs, for example. That's wrong. It's, it's certainly not fair. It certainly doesn't show that you're winning an argument, but that can hurt honest people's livelihoods who have done nothing more than have a nuanced position that's different than yours. You would probably call me racist because I don't agree with the motivations of Black Lives Matter. It's a racist movement. It's specifically, like, definitionally racist. It is focusing exclusively on one race above all others for whatever their cause is. Definition of racism as it is used in broader society is prejudice based on racial characteristics. So anybody who's not black is a racist, and according to, uh, according to that methodology for Black Lives Matter, but Black Lives Matter themselves is saying that we are important here. Another reason why people say all lives matter and not just black lives matter. Are you willing to publicly acknowledge and admonish the massive amount of hatred, bullying, harassment, and intimidation that a lot of your fans infringe upon people? And I don't mean these tiny disclaimers that you put under the description fold or flash for two seconds at the beginning of the video that you know nobody reads. I mean a public and ongoing anti-bullying stance. Or do you kind of like watching your fans go around harassing people and calling them slurs and telling them to kill themselves? You kind of like it, don't you? I mean, if that's your thing, I guess that's just what you're into. Just makes you a dick. Perhaps, perhaps people like that are dicks. Or maybe, perhaps, um, people who follow me are adults. Probably. Uh, they are rational agents who can make their own choices. And perhaps, um, unless they're commenting on my stuff, I don't get notified when they go and make comments somewhere else. It's not my job to police what people do who like my content any more than it's NBC's problem that baseball fans, you know, riot in the stands when, you know, the, they, their, their team wins the, the pennant. Why would it be NBC's problem? People enjoy their content. They enjoy watching the baseball game. But when people go out and riot because the team won, is that NBC's fault? Is that CBS's fault or Fox News's fault? Well, it's Fox Sports probably, but... Is that their fault because people enjoy their content? Should we worry the people that follow the, the people who like the show Sleepy Hollow 
uh, might go out and do something bad? Is that Sleepy Hollow's fault that that happened? See where I'm going here? I don't put disclaimers on my videos to not go out and harass other people. I don't think I need to. It won't make a difference. But I'll state here, if anybody watches my channel, any subscriber ever, forever, ever goes off and says that I'm going to harass somebody because they disagree with somebody that I like. You're a dick. Okay? If you honestly disagree with somebody and think you have something to add to the conversation and want to go over and engage them in conversation, that's fine. I can't take how... I can't manage how that person will decide to handle that response in any way because that's up to them to make that decision. Both the, the subscriber and the the person who they're responding to. An innocuous comment when someone is under stress could cause someone to think that, that they're being abused. There are dicks out there. There are people who 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 deliberately troll and they shouldn't. And I would say that those people should just get off the internet. Or stop being dicks. I'm sorry. Or stop being dicks. But am I going to, before every video, do a video saying, hey, don't be a dick and, and uh, you know, bullying is wrong and, and blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not. You don't either. So you may think that people who fall watch your videos don't go out and do that. If you've got more than 500 subs, you're probably wrong. You probably have one that does that. Where, where are you man? How are you managing that person or those people? You may have more than one. Why do you find it so hard to believe that feminists are being harassed online? I don't think anybody thinks that feminists aren't being harassed online. I think that there is a understanding that sometimes, some people may even say often, the harassment isn't really harassment, uh, that the it's taken out of context. It is blown out of proportion for how bad or horrible or terrible it is. Um, but I'm sure that, that feminists online get harassed. I'm sure they do. I get harassed online, and I'm a straight, white, cisgendered, heterosexual male with 13 subscribers. And I, I get people calling me a, a dick and silly and stupid and all this other kind of stuff. Granted, I don't have a lot of comments in my comment section yet, but Hey, it happens. And what I do with it is I shrug my shoulders and say, okay, should somebody threaten my life? It's, it's an internet comment. It's wrong. People shouldn't do that, but it happens. And I'm not going to get bent out of shape because it happens. So, yes, feminists get harassed online. A lot of people get harassed online. And the more of a deal you make out of it, the more likely you are to get harassed again because you have fed the trolls. Do you understand the key importance of reproducibility and repeatability in scientific research? That's simply going to Google Scholar, doing a 30 second search for keywords and pulling out the first paper you find that backs up your stance is not a particularly credible way to do research. That you have to have a much broader overview to read the material, to follow the citations through, to look at the broad brush approach to a particular problem. You do realize that you're as much of a social justice warrior as those you critique. It's just that you espouse a different form of social justice, a rather less considerate, rather less forgiving, rather less kind form of social justice. I disagree. Um, going to Google Scholar is something that a lot of people don't do online in the first place when making an argument. Uh, Phil, you yourself show, I don't know what the, what the right word here is, and I, I don't mean to disparage you because I'm sure you're a wonderful physicist. I really enjoy your stuff over on 60 Symbols. But 
what you're saying here is that you have to have a broader understanding of, of these topics than than we do. That's great that the science is out there, but you yourself don't show that this is something that you do. In this whole argument you have with Thunderfoot over, um, we'll call it nature versus nurture, uh, you seem to completely ignore the nature part of the argument of people choosing college majors. There are mountains of papers out there talking about sexual dimorphism and how those differences manifest themselves in society. Saying that there are tons of social factors out there doesn't answer the question about how much there is social versus biological influence um, in, in these, these, uh, this arena, if you will, you yourself have shown that you go to Google scholar and just look up the stuff that you agree with. You may pull out a paper instead of going to Google scholar. I suspect you're probably more of a Google scholar guy. You seem pretty tech savvy, but the research supporting sexual dimorphism is a much larger body of work than the stuff that, which is, much newer and perhaps more nuanced, but the, the social aspects of these types of gender choices, there's not as much stuff there. I've looked. That's how I know. I haven't read every paper. I can't verify the quality of these studies, but I have looked at studies on both ends and both ends seem to make good points, but the biological ones seem to have more empirical data and less I'm trying to think of a better word here than, than what I was going to use there. It's not that it's not empirical. Um, it's less objective. It is more subjective material um, because it's determining that type of, of answer is more subjective. So you fail at your own argument because of I'm aware of the conversation you, you were trying to have with Thunderfoot and he essentially blew you off. So I don't know what to tell you, doctor, but, uh, keep doing the physics stuff. If you identify as an egalitarian, then I'm interested in your take on the usefulness of the concept of the original position as laid out by John Rawls in his theory of justice. Well, Christy, um, I had not heard of the, uh, what do we call it here? Uh, the original position before. So I looked it up. Uh, and I, I'm fine with it. What, what more do you want me to say? The, the original position, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, by philosopher John Rawls, is basically replacing the position of the savage as the base unit of, of humanity uh, with a rational actor who can uh, who can want things to be fair and making things fair uh, would make him virtuous per, I suppose is the best way to put it uh, from Wikipedia here uh, as a thought experiment, the original position is a hypothetical position designed to accurately reflect what principles of justice would be manifest in a society premised on free and fair cooperation between citizens, including respect for liberty and an interest in reciprocity. I would say, however, that that is not necessarily... It, it's not... I, I've actually read through at least the entire Wikipedia article. I had started on the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy uh, paper on it. It's a bit longer, however. Uh, but from, from my brief reading, uh, I will say that that's great. However, the problem with the original position is that as human beings we are creatures 
that have limited resources. That limited resource brings upon competition, which takes us back to the savage idea, uh, the savage state of nature uh, that Thomas Hobbes proposed. Where we all already economically neutral, uh, where our basic needs were met, I think that the original position would be a better way to function in society and certainly a position that we should we should strive to as rational agents and rational human beings but i don't think that in nature that's where we begin i think that that until we are um in a position where we can have the things that we need without having to work for them or to fight for them or to be challenged by others for those things, then the original position is, is, a, is a fairy tale. It's a pipe dream. Uh, but it's certainly somewhere that I think that humanity should get to. And I think that it's, it's something that we should strive for even. But we're not there. As a supporter, as a proponent of freedom of speech, why do you want to quash academic freedom? If you're not familiar with the concept of academic freedom, it's worth, in the UK at least, looking up the 1988 Education Reform Act and seeing what that says about the rights of academics to put across unpopular opinions. All right, so I'm not sure what he's getting at there. Uh, frankly, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Did I close? No, it's over here. Whew. Okay, so... I'm not sure what Moriarty's getting at here. I don't know of anybody that is in favor of shutting down uh, academic freedom. Even in, if he's referring to Sargon of Akkad's position or uh, Sargon of Akkad's petition regarding uh, shutting down social justice classes uh, until they can be reviewed, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with that either. The... The petition is more of a lark than it is an actual uh, functional piece of anything. Uh, but I kind of support the idea of reviewing things to make sure that things are being taught appropriately. That we're not indoctrinating people into ideologies that are just ideologies and not empirical. Much like what most feminist theory is. It's not empirical. It is subjective and, and transient and hypothetical. It's speculative and it's a closed system where any problems can be explained by some other part of something. There's no open end to the loop. People should be free to, to teach that. Uh, in their own time. Colleges should be about teaching facts and, and rational things. If you want to teach social justice at, at Bible colleges, okay. But I don't think they should be taught at state schools or schools where individuals are, are putting their tax dollars into. Because it's not rational, empirical, and it's not directly demonstrable. And it's, it's not falsifiable. Unless you are going to argue from outside the position. From inside the position, everything can be explained. And that's not scientific. That's not rational. Why are you so obsessed with Anita Sarkeesian? Not. Um, Anita Sarkeesian is trying to apply... Well, first off, she people have problems with how much money she raised for a Kickstarter and then never finished the video series that she said she would do she had like six videos to do. She did four of them in three years. But she made $160,000 off her Kickstarter to make the video series in a year. That's probably what people have problems with. She got too busy starting her own nonprofit. Now she's coming back. Her and, and Macintosh are coming back. But they're not even finishing that series yet. That's why people are, are mad at her. Ignore her criticisms of video games, which are terribly cherry-picked, uh, irrational and illiberal, uh, and s clearly uh, from the bosom of bell hooks, uh, probably the worst parts of bell hooks. 
Um, they are certainly sex negative representations of video games. I think that a lot of people, a lot of people that like video games don't appreciate her critique. Do you really think you can spend your entire life in a perpetual state of emotional immaturity? Do you actually imagine that you will be able to perpetuate your adolescence for your entire exist? Wait, wait, didn't somebody else ask this one? Wait, I gotta... Ah, fuck. Uh, how is acting rationally uh, perpetuating childhood? being emotionally reactionary and crying because you know you don't like what somebody said is childish having your feelings hurt by somebody not agreeing with you is childish people can behave in a childish way many times and frequently and often but at the end of the day someone who is rational and mature perhaps uh, wouldn't behave that way I guess so I don't know which social justice or anti-social justice people you are referring to uh, some people are dramatic and some people are, are boisterous and loud and perhaps act a bit crazy but I, there's no sense of outrage or, or there's no sense of, of I'm not getting my way, so damn it, I'm going to throw a fit, at least not in the people that I watch. Perhaps there are people like that out there. Perhaps people behave that way in comment sections or something like that. But, you know, you'll have to have them answer for you. So that's it. Um, that's it. Uh, the people involved in this video were uh, the one janitor, H-Bomber guy, Demotivator Opinion, Tom Avela, Philip Moriarty, Michael Rollins, Christy Winters, Chris Yossity, Steve Shives, The Ranting Feminist. I think that was it. Uh, let's see. Yes. So, link to their video will be in the description. Uh, I will throw in no, I'm not going to throw in the, the B-roll with uh, H-Bomber guy at the end talking to Anita Sarkeesian. It is it is kind of funny. Uh, so please, if you don't want to watch the whole video again, skip to the end of the video, like the last 50 seconds, 45 seconds or so. Uh, it's cute in a silly way. Uh, it's certainly not serious. It, it's, it's it's about as, as rational as anything else that he did in the entire video. So... That's it. That's my take on it. I'll I got some editing to do. Let's just put it that way. Um, at the end of the day, I, I find this this video disingenuous. Um, it, it is attempting to ask reasonable questions to anti SJWs, but is a lot of of the right word I'm looking for here. Um, it's, it's a lot of, of I don't know. It, it's really kind of terrible. Uh, it's pedantic. It is effusive. Now I won't say effusive. This video is dishonest to some extent if these are supposed to be reasonable questions um, why did so many of them try to be gotcha questions oh you know Christy Winters you know, nobody ever heard of the original position so I'll throw that in there no context no nothing you know quick Google search pulls up information on it and I'll continue to read the uh, Stanford and Psychology of Philosophy on it uh, even though I disagree with it, uh, it's fine, but that's not how people are. If people were like that, we could all be libertarians.
but we're not because we people aren't that way people aren't always behaving we don't always behave rationally as evidenced by the fact that so many of these questions you've asked had to do with people's feelings it's about how people feel about stuff and not about rational empirical positions there, there were some there but I don't care about how you feel I don't care about how you feel I want to know about what's real your feelings are real but they are selected choices they are selected reactions within your brain things that you can change you can fix if you can decide that you like spinach believe it or not you can like spinach if you don't like spinach now you can change those things about yourself. I guess that's it, though. Um, yeah, so hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, I will be posting these as, as I get them done over the course of the week. Uh, by the time you get to this point, you'll know that already. Uh, so thanks for watching, uh, and uh, we'll see you uh, next time. So goodbye. And hello, as always. If it doesn't.